Welcome to Wager Talk TV. I am Kelly Stewart, and we are here talking some college basketball for the 2023 season. Joined by Adam Trigger of wagertalk.com at Top Flight SI on Twitter. Adam, now I know you and I could both be long winded, but we're going to try to keep this one short and concise. I want you to hammer down a few things that you look for in college basketball, what people can expect when buying your college basketball package. Well, what you can expect when you get my college basketball plays, A, you're going to get a full page of analysis like you do with all of my plays. But B, um, as the season goes along, I've, I've went and seen most of these teams in person. Um, you know, last year I went to 23 different venues, saw close to 30 different games. Uh, and I'm going to do the same thing this year. And I tend to target the, you know, the teams that I've seen play a couple times live. I, I do think you can gain an edge, um, you know, from getting to see a team in person. And I think actually the biggest edge you can give yourself in college basketball handicapping is to scale things down. There's 350 plus division one schools. And, and if you, if you really focus on like 40 or 50 of them or the ones in your area, you'll, you'll get a lot of Mac conference plays for me. I went to Siena uh, and it's a conference I focus on. I really do think that you can improve your profit margin. So, um, you know, like I said, analysis and you can, you'll know that I've seen them play at least once in person. All right, last season, Adam was number one at Wager Talk in college basketball, 122, 90, and five. That is almost 58%, just a little over 87 units gained. I did get to go to a couple of those college basketball games with Adam and hopefully a couple of more uh, coming up here around the corner in the Bahamas, plus maybe a couple of Northeast trips. But Adam, one of the things you mentioned was scaling it down, right? There are... 350 plus NCAA Division One teams. So we know the books can't keep track of everything. Me, I'm a Power Five conference girl, whether it's college basketball or college football, but you do like to focus on those smaller schools. So one of the things that I think is important is kind of following the beat writers of said smaller schools. You have a couple other things that you like to do as well. Yeah, I mean, listen, it doesn't have to be the smaller conferences. I do think there's an edge to be had in some of these smaller conferences that are are less reported on. Uh, but you have, a, if you have a great contact that you know, in your case, Kansas State and our good buddy CT cases Baylor, that that's gives you an edge, and anywhere you can find an edge it is absolutely key. Um, so I, you know, to to handicappers that are just starting out, I always say like, listen, you don't. You don't need to be Russell Crowe in a beautiful mind trying to look at the board, right? Like 350 teams, 100 games on on Sat, you know, 150 games on Saturday, trying to pick out a couple of winners. Follow certain conferences. I tell people focus on the conference in your backyard. I live in upstate New York, so we've got Syracuse basketball, we've got Patriot League, MAC. You know, just did a, a show with Jeff Michaels, another wager talk guy. He lives in Ohio. He's got the MAC schools, the Akron's, the Toledo's, the Kent State's. You, just by following the local beat writers, and you'll figure out what ones that are good, uh, you can get info that you can usually beat the odds makers to. Because you got to remember, these odds makers are following football, college football. The NBA has started, NHL, all that's in season at the same time college basketball is. So there's going to be opportunity to beat the books to the punch. And as you know, Kelly, if you can beat the odds makers to the line move or to the info, you're probably going to make money long term. Uh, so I, I always say focus on what you know first and expand it out from there. Very good points. There's my guy, Jerome Tang, hanging out there in the background. Love to see it. All right, let's talk about, you mentioned some of these smaller schools, right? And they also have smaller budgets, right? Uh, Manhattan, Kansas, didn't have an airport for four months. Everybody had to go to Kansas City. These things kind of come into play as far as schedule and travel is concerned. Yeah, it's so huge. Listen, some of these schools travel so many miles, like the one that always comes to mind, Hawaii, right? Like that's, they, you know, for years, they always sort of led the NCAA in miles logged, miles traveled because they were constantly coming back to the mainland. They were in a, you know, conference that was sending them all over the place. And in recent years, they've slimmed it down. So they basically only play California schools. Uh, but, you know, some of the smaller schools, especially like the newer Division One schools, Got to pay the bills somehow, and usually the way you pay the bills is go on the road, play what we call buy games. They go pick up their paycheck from a bigger university, and, and sometimes you know the the more money the program needs, the crazier the schedule tends to be. And listen, these are these are 18, 19, 20 year old kids going to get burned out. You know, Coppin State is a school that came to mind that played so many road games across the country. 
in, in short succession last year or, you know, in years past, you see it with some of those schools that, you know, you'll be able to find a spot where they're just totally burned out and they're going to go lose one of these games by 50. So schedule and travel is so important. And then knowing like in your conference, you know, I, I referenced the NAAC because that's sort of my home conference. I know these schools struggle when they have to take a bus ride out to Buffalo in the middle of winter. It's a long trip, and they usually have to play Canisius and Niagara back to back, and it rarely ends well. You know, Kelly, you spent some time in the Mountain West, you know, following those Mountain West teams. That trip to Laramie can be can be difficult. That trip to, you know, Reno can be tough. So it's it's really just sort of, you know, knowing the dynamic of the conference, the travel, and, and I guarantee you'll be able to cash a ticket or two just by, you know, being ahead of, of where a, a potential pitfall is uh, for a team in their travel and their schedule. That's really funny. Uh, I actually had uh, someone I was dating that coached at UNLV basketball and they got stuck in Laramie. And uh, <laughs> let's just say I, I bet against that team. Eh, call it inside information, call it what you want. But sometimes that information is very valuable. We saw with the, the Aces getting stuck at McCarran. We've seen it time and time again. Actually, Adam, while we're on that subject, the new Big 12 is all the way out to Salt Lake City now, or Provo, actually, even with BYU, and all the way to Cincinnati, if it wasn't already to Morgantown. I don't know which one is farther east. But now we have the Big 10, all the way to Southern California, all the way up to Washington State, all the way back over to Ohio. How do you think that kind of travel is going to play out this first year until teams get used to it? Or do these schools just have enough money, they're just hopping on a jet, and they're fine? Yeah, I'm starting to think that the bigger programs, the football schools, are, the budgets are so good that I think the travel becomes less of an issue. But, you know, you're still going to have like you you made the example of the Big 12. I, I, I think the first couple of times teams have to go out to Provo, they'll struggle similar to when West Virginia joined the conference years ago. You know, that trip to Morgantown for a while um, was tough. You know, there was some. Uh, West Virginia teams that weren't as good that had great home records because teams were kind of getting accustomed to having to go to the Eastern time zone, maybe fresh off playing at Texas Tech and then having to go out to West Virginia or maybe played a home game and then had to go out there for like a midweek road game. So, you know, I would say or in the early going in, until it's like sort of like, you know, kind of baked in in, in year three and year four in the early going with the crazy travel. I look at that as an opportunity to maybe get some value on a, on a home team or the team, you know, that's in the sort of tough travel spot. Yeah. Also Salt Lake City Provo, not as high as Laramie, but still have some elevation. Let's talk sure. about one of the things that I think is the most important, right? And this was something I wasn't sure what we were going to see from Kansas State last year, since you used them for example earlier, because of the way the transfer portal is set up, right? We've seen it be particularly well in college football. Talk to me about continuity, teams playing multiple games with one another, doing these early season scrimmages and or playing summer ball, anything like that to start to build this continuity because we know how important it is to get that starting five very cohesive by the time tip-off comes around. Yeah, it's huge. It's become a huge thing in college basketball. So, I mean, listen, you've got – you have schools that really hit the portal hard and you have you – have, Coaches that have started to move away from it for sort of that reason where they feel like year to year, they're not really able to like grow their team because it's it's a revolving door of players coming in, coming out. Uh, Sienna's coach had a great quote. You know, a lot of these guys are in the portal for a reason. You have to think of like bringing new personalities in. We've seen it with Oregon a couple of times where they looked absolutely loaded on paper and it didn't pan out. And that's a great coach, Dana Altman, that, that couldn't sort of get everyone on the same page because – it's new. It's new people. You, you see Tom Izzo kind of going away from the portal. So, you know, it's all very notable when you're looking at a team trying to handicap it, handicap that team. How new is the team? You know, I, I like to look at like how comfortable is, is the coach? Do they need wins in November or December or do they have sort of the, the, you know, luxury, like where their job security is so good, where they can tinker a little bit and, and get the right lineup. Because I've Kelly, at this point, I've divided the season into thirds. I look at it as almost three different seasons. I think you have your non-conference, November, December. I think you have league play, and then you have postseason tournament. And, and I, I think all three need to be looked at a little bit differently. I, I'm almost willing to give schools fresh starts in, in a lot of cases where maybe you maybe you get a school that was highly rated coming into the season. They played a tough non-conference schedule. They struggled a little bit. You know, Vermont comes to mind last year, played a brutal non-conference schedule, but they cleaned up in America East play like they always do um, and, and then made another NCAA tournament. So, 
you know, I, I like to look at the schedule like that. But yeah, I mean, and, and then just go back to the Oregon example. Sometimes these teams don't pan out and you can just keep fading them because the, the books always price things to sort of come back to where they had teams rated. And, and that's just the reality of the transfer portal. Sometimes you're not, you know, you're not going to hit on every guy that you bring in. And when it, when it doesn't happen, you, you can get some value playing against these teams almost all season long because the, the regression is expected by the odds makers and it just never happens. And you get cash ticket after ticket if you are ahead of that curve. All right, we're up against it here because we've got the college basketball show on deck. Even though this is an evergreen video, you can take all the notes you need. Don't forget to check out the college basketball show over on Wager Talk TV. Last but not least, this one is tough. Coaching. We know that there are some coaches that are a little more aggressive than others. There are some coaches that might be in the hot seat. Let's talk about how coaching is going to affect your wagers. Oh, I mean, I keep meticulous notes on the coaches. Uh, uh, there's coaches I like to play on. There's coaches I like to bet against. You know, Randy Bennett for St. Mary's is one that comes to mind. I know I'm going to really like St. Mary's this year. Um, when he has upperclassmen, he's he's absolutely lethal. He's almost always underrated. And then there's other coaches that are just not great in-game coaches. And, and you can find those as you go. And they will cost their teams games on occasion. And, and you know, so I, I always look at the coaching. Coaching edge is huge for me uh, when I'm making a wager. And, and, you know, obviously the other thing I already mentioned earlier in the show, you know, how secure is their job? Do they have the ability to play with, play with things in November, December? And what conference are they coming from? These bigger conferences, the November and December games matter a lot less. You know, they're going to have their chance to have a good record in conference and win and get an at-large bid to the tournament. Whereas, you know, you, you get a team like from a, from a mid-major, they might need those November and December wins to have any chance to be considered an at-large all is worth taking into consideration when you're handicapping college basketball. Any edge you can find is going to be huge in terms of whether you're going to win or lose on a season. You love it. Excited. College basketball less than two weeks away right now. Starting over at Wager Talk, you can get Adam's season-long package right now with the early bird special $4.99. That is all of his college basketball plays, including any 5%. Last year, Adam was number one at Wager Talk. 122.90 and five. That is almost 58%. No coupon needed right now. Wagertalk.com.